Stupid. All right. Good evening. So we're in, uh, again, we're in Willow, Alaska. I'm going to take a little bit of time and uh, show you guys how to paint a pike. It's, it's, uh, artistically, it's pretty, pretty straightforward painting. And uh, this is one of my uh, CNC carvings from, you, you can see the carving on my Etsy store. It's Scott Art CNC on Etsy. And it's just a fun one to do. And a lot of you guys in the Midwest, we all know pike fishermen and stuff. And this one just looks so spectacular when it's finished that uh, I think this is a great one to try to learn something about painting. So mostly I'm going to show you a little bit about blending today because the key to this is blending. Now, when you're working with acrylics, I've already loaded up my palette here with a, some different colors on here. I have uh, some Tiberian white and uh, brown. Umber. This is Payne's Gray, which is one of my favorite colors. There's a little bit of, of Hooker's Green. There's some blue here and and, and uh, cadmium yellow. And that's really all I have in my palette right now. And I've got a little water in a can here. And what I'm going to show you do, we're going to work on blending. Now with acrylics, they take in this in this room at the temperature we're at with the, they take oh six or eight minutes to dry. So I'm going to, uh, and I can speed it up with a hair dryer once you have some colors and stuff that you want. But I'm going to do most of this with a great, <laughs> with a great big old two inch dollar thirty one brush from Lowe's, and uh, and hopefully you guys will get some hope, and and uh, give this a try. So I'm going to take a little bit of cooker green, and uh, some cadmium yellow in here. And what I'm after is an almost the very dark that goes on the back line. And I'm creating that over here, mostly heavy on the paint gray there, but you can see there's some green in it. And I'm gonna rough in this hole. Part of Mr. Pike. I also have, <laughs> if you look in the background, back there, I, have, I have one, let's see if you can see, there's one over there in the back that I did, because these are just really popular pieces with people. So I have, uh, I have a reference here that I'm using as I do this. Get the cameraman to hold still here. And I also, I still also have my little iPad here that has color references on it. And I have a pike picture on there I use to try to get a sense of of uh, of the colors that I want, I'm, I'm I'm right now I'm mixing in. I have a little bit of burnt umber that I'm mixing in with that dark color because it just gives it that it warms it up. It's going to give me a bit of that uh, brown that I really want. We'll have to see how much time it takes. If I'm even going to do the rainbow trout today, but we'll at least get this Mr. Pike further around. So I kind of like what's going on with that umber in there and the brown. Now the next transition is it starts to get all, you can start to get all these uh, pretty yellows. I'm going to mix in and so get a little bit of my cadmium red on here quick. So when you change colors, you want to clean your brush off as best as you can. So just a quick dip and change colors. I'm going to go to cad yellow and a tiny amount of red. I'm going to start down here below. And I'm going to blend them right on that transition line. I'm going to bl blend them together a bit. Not too much. I don't want to go that paint still wet up top. So I don't want to pull it down in here. But I'm going to go along the edges of it and just grab enough of it that they sort of go together a bit, not much. And same up here in the face area. <laughs> These are big, tough brushes and I just destroy them when I use them. I'm gonna get getting a little bit more green in there than I want. So I'm gonna go back here and grab just some adenium yellow and a little bit of 
That's getting too much red in it. Do a lot of mixing right here on the palette. Get this in here. Look at this, there's really, there's more green in this than, than I'm giving it right now. So I'm gonna come back here and I pull a little bit of my hooker's green into this bottom area. And you can see I probably got quite a bit of it right there. But again, I'm gonna just blend. And I'm stay, being careful to stay away from that top area because you can pull color down in up there. The other thing you can do on these carvings, if you do this really light, with watered down paint, you can get some really pretty washes and it looks more like, then your grains show off a little bit better, which is pretty. So I started out this paint, this carving. So before I ever got on the camera with you guys, I coated the whole carving with a single layer of, of uh, titanium white, just because I want the colors that I'm putting on to have some chance of showing up uh, just the way they're supposed to. So you start out with a white base layer. I like a little bit of that umber. You're gonna play with this yourself a bit, I hope, and, and find the colors that you like, but I like a little bit of this brown sort of umber in this area here. Gives it a more of a golden hue. I'm gonna take some more of that umber and kind of pull it up in here a little bit because I might have more, I want to lighten up some of that real dark on top. Just like that. So that's all, all pretty much big brushwork right there. I'm going to go back and take my smaller three quarter inch brush with some burnt umber and a a uh, little bit of the hooker's green and, and uh, pick up some of these highlights on the face area of this villa around the gill plates and <coughs> that. There's eye back. <laughs> they they kind of have almost snake eyes on them. So we'll, I'll get you up. I'll play you in closer on that here. Let's take a little bit closer look at what I'm doing on the face. So you guys that catch these things all the time know they have some really cool little highlights on them. But I would just say go get um, when you're fishing. Take reference pictures. That's right. I'm going to do a king salmon like this next week, and I've got some great reference pictures. And, and they have all the salmon family goes through so many color changes that uh, it's just kind of fun to paint them. You have so many different options of what all the different stages they go through is fun. 
this trout's in serious trouble, man. The original one I did has a lure in the trout's mouth and you know, I need a little more sanding up here, I can see. Get that done. And then this is the smallest brush I really use. This beak is a little inch one. I'm just, just gonna give this guy some, <clears throat> just touch that right there. Have him focus right on that little buddy. Then let's back out of here for a minute again and I'll show you what we're gonna, I'm trying to do this pretty quick so you guys can, so this paint is still wet right now, but in a few minutes, it's gonna be dry. And, and then we can do some other stuff on top of it. But I'm gonna take, again, some of the CAD, CAD red mixed with, let's see, I'm just gonna mix a little bit of the burnt umber into the CAD red to muddy it up a little bit. And uh, I'm gonna start out with some bright colors on the on the fins. I'm gonna clean those up a little bit. Mute that a little bit in a few minutes, but for right now, that's where we're going with them. Get those. That goes pretty quick. And again, great big brush work on that. So we'll go back to our smaller brush now and with a little bit of, again, I'm mixing the burnt umber and, and uh, Payne's gray. And I'm gonna pick up some of the, this paint's still green, still wet. But if you're careful with it, you can, Whatever, it's just wet enough. I'm gonna. So here's the here's the magic when you're doing production painting. Just a little hair dryer will uh, fix all this paint, so I can't smear it when I'm putting new paint on top of it. So when you reach a point like that, you dry it out. So that dries that paint out pretty quick and now you don't have to worry about, um, let me pull you in pretty tight here for a minute so you can see what I'm doing over here. Now you can not worry too much about smearing the paint, that red paint, I really don't wanna lose that because those colors are there and they get modified more by how much they look, they look more brown or darker, but mostly that's because of these hashes on here. And then all the years of catching pike, I used to catch them in Montana and we caught them for a lot of years up in Canada because that's where the families originally from is up there. And we caught a lot of, a lot of pike up there when I was young. And it's always amazed me that there's just different sort of color varying some it's like rainbow trout. They depending on the water they're in, I guess, and what they're eating, and you guys know. You just you're getting the real quick Scott Thompson version of how this stuff gets painted. That red paint is still a little bit left, red, wet in there, so you can see it's it's pulling with the. And it helps the thinner 
you mix paint. So right, I'm not using water right now because, well, frankly, because the water's just out of reach. I'm going to trip over trying to get to it. But thinner paint lays on top easier than thick paint. This is pretty thick paint I'm putting on right now. And uh, the thinner paint will not pull the thick paint down. <laughs> It's a little tricky running the camera and painting because what you guys are seeing on the camera on the screen is 180 degrees off of what I'm seeing when I'm looking at it. It's flipped. I guess makes sense if if you think about it. So last thing I'm gonna do on this pike is, I, is well, it's not the last thing, the last thing on the base layer, because we obviously have to put an awful lot of dots on this pike, which we'll do here pretty quick. But the, uh, when the shadows are falling under anything, whether it's a tree or a pike or the belly of a big bull elk or something, you get uh, the same shadows you would see on snow or the re reflection of what's going on in the, in the sky. So, there is some blues that show up on the bottom. I'm just going to put a couple of those in to kind of, I'll post a picture of this in better light when I get it done so you can see what the colors look like. <clears throat> When we get it out of the painting area here, you'll be able to see that better. So I got too much red showing up in this part of the tail. So I'm just trying to fix that quick. Okay, so now lots of spots all over these pike, and I tend to come from the white areas up down in here. Big pretty white bellies. And this just takes work. I actually like using this smaller brush to do it. And then we'll start start back here. Come in close again so you can see, kind of watch this unfold. So I'll put these down in here and as the, as I run out of paint on this brush, it's not covering as good, then I'll come up into these dark areas because I want less paint up in this transition area. Then I want down in here. Looking at the pictures I've looked in the pipe, they're not, these are not all perfect little matches, but you guys go get your reference pictures out. You can see it's just going to take a few minutes of putting in these hashes in here. They need to be reasonably random in size and they don't seem to show up as regular. You know, if you're doing um, 
scales or something on a bass or a walleye, there's a definite pattern to them. And scales are quite different than this. Just pike camo, what we're dealing with here. There's some really active pike fishing groups up here in Alaska. And it's interesting because a lot of the lakes up here are not, uh, the pike aren't native. They, they uh, somebody planted them or brought them in. And, and up here, the big game fish is, is salmon. So the fishing game up here poisons the pike out. And right now in the area I live in, a lot of the lakes, there's no limit on how many pike you catch. And in fact, it's illegal to throw them back. So if you catch them, you, if you don't want them, you just have to throw them out on the bank. And so there's a lot of turmoil over that. A lot of guys think that because they're a wonderful game fish, but they do tend to decimate salmon smolt where they're just not used to them. They'll go in and wipe out a whole salmon run. So I don't know, two sides to that story, I'm sure. Some, some guy threw a bucket full of pike in his pickup truck and they, as you guys know they don't I remember cleaning them in Saskatchewan and we we would uh, take pike out of the fishing shack and it's 25 below zero my uncle would throw them out on the shore and out on the ice and we'd on the way home we'd throw them in the back of the snow machine trailer and we get back to the kitchen to clean the pike and he'd throw them in the sink and run water on them and, and dang things would come to life again it was <laughs> so surreal just a pretty tough fish. You guys have seen them with their gills ripped out and other fish stuck in their heads. And they're just beautiful, real tough fish, kind of fun. For a little dull this whoops, red in there. I really didn't want that. I'm gonna get just a little bit of umber up in here on some of these. to make them sort of fade in a bit. Probably should have backed this up so you guys didn't have to stare at my shoulder the whole time there. I wasn't really watching that, but that's uh, that's kind of the quick version of, of a pike. These marks get smaller up here. And they seem to There you go. So that's a pike. It doesn't take a long time to paint them. Uh, you got to learn a little bit about, uh, about blending to get that to work. And uh, they're just fun to paint and they turn out pretty cool. I'm going to, I'll spend some more time after I turn this off, but I'd encourage you to try them. It's a good, it's a good first, uh, First, learning if you want to learn to paint fish, this is a fun one to learn to paint because it's uh, it's pretty pretty darn easy. And I have models on my uh, Scott Art CNC. You can get the model of the pike alone, or you can get the one with the trout in his mouth. And and if you need some custom, just let me know. But uh, I would encourage you to try doing it. It's a great gift. There's a ton of pike fishermen in your life, and they turn out really cool when you paint them, or if you just uh, do put a light wash on them, they turn out pretty cool. So. That's paint the pike. Now I'm gonna go turn off the camera and finish that rainbow trout because that's an entirely different class. So thanks for looking.